What is going on, you card fondlers? In this one, we're going to be showing off a 17-card personal PSA reveal. Um, this particular submission is, is kind of weird. Um, all of these cards were originally in my collection, but they were all the old blue flip. If you remember about six or seven years ago, PSA DNA had a blue flip, and the flip is what's at the top of um, a, a PSA slab, and PSA cards had a red flip. And that's how you could kind of differentiate. Um, and then five or six years ago or so, they changed it where they were all red. So me being a little OCD, I don't, I didn't like the blue flips in the PC. And the resale value on them, as silly as it might sound, is, is a little lower. So I sent a bunch of my blue flips to PSA um, just for crossover. Okay, so before... They all have already authenticated the autograph. So they already know the autograph's real. The only thing they didn't do is authenticate the card. Okay, so I'm sending these blue flips in, and all I want them to do is put it in a new case and authenticate the card, the end. You notice I didn't say anything about grading. Like, like the grading word never came out of my mouth. Well, somehow all of these cards got dual graded. So the autograph got graded and the card got graded. And you might think, well, Garrett, that's freaking awesome, man. That's amazing. Well, it's not amazing when the cards, the condition of the cards are shit. Uh, I would have never, ever chose for these cards to get graded. Um, potentially the autographs, not all, definitely not all. Potentially some of the autographs. Um, so needless to say, when I got these in, I was like, what the hell happened here, man? Um, so it's pretty interesting. Like, it's kind of one of those things where you think it might be a hookup, but it, I think it really honestly hurts the resale value of a lot of these. And majority of these, I think out of the 17, I think two or three are, are PC now. The rest will be going up in the eBay store. So we'll turn it around. Um, I still love PSA, man. I'm a PSA homer. I love them, love them, love them. And I understand with the amount of transactions and slabs they do, there is going to be mistakes. You cannot help that. Um, it just seems like more times here lately, there's been more mistakes than there has in my past eight years doing uh, PSA DNA group submissions. I guess nine years now. Um, it just seems more frequent now. So it's not the end of the world. It's another bump in the road. We'll keep on trucking. Let's turn this camera around and see what we got. Okie dokie, let's jump into it. Um, we'll get it started with this 1976 OJ Simpson PSA 2 Autograph 8. Um, this card kind of has a cool story. I got this at the National the last time the National was in um, Baltimore. And I forget the dude's name, the gentleman's name. He has since passed on. I'm wanting to say it was Rich, Rich something. It's going to drive me nuts, and I'm sure one of y'all will put it down in Rich Altman. There it is, Rich Altman. It was his booth. Um, and he had, like I said, he has since passed on, but he was there, and he's the guy I actually did this transaction with. This was the only card in his booth that was signed like this. He had some... Um, Panini certified cards and top certified cards and so on and so forth. But this was the only one like that, and it was raw. So he and I, we, we came up with a deal. He, he asked for 100 bucks, and I told him that I would pay $100 for it if I could go send it to JSA or PSA and get it authenticated. And so he, he, he said, cool, we got a deal. And he wrote, he wrote the terms of the deal on the back of a business card. And so I went to PSA's line was just insane. So I ended up going to JSA. I told them I did not want a sticker on it. So they ended up giving me a full page letter with the sticker that would go on the on the item that was on the on the paper. And it came back real. So I came back to him, gave him back his business card that had the stipulation on it, and I was on my way, and that's his card. So kind of cool. Really shocked that the autograph is an eight. Um, kind of, as I said in my intro, I didn't want any of this stuff graded. Um, but just looking at it here, it looks 
Well, I'm not going to be one of those guys. It looks like a nine. But anyways, I'm just surprised it's an eight. Mike Webster, 1978 tops. Um, PSA 3, autograph 10. Super cool. Um, I think I only have like two or three Mike Webster autographs in the collection or in the, the old collection, I guess you could say. Um, I had someone write me. It's funny, a lot of you guys write me on Facebook after a video instead of writing in the comment section. But someone asked me, um, here we go, 1956 tops, Frank Gifford, signed in black ballpoint pen with the Hall of Fame inscription, PSA 3, autograph 8. Um, but ask me, well, if I'm selling all this stuff, like, what's my PC? Am I getting out? And I'm really not. Um, my PC is going to be NFL Hall of Fame autographs, kind of going back to what originally started all of this player era stuff. Um, but I want them to be nice, really, really nice condition cards with multiple inscriptions. And I think I want to keep it at that, keep it simple. Kind of went off the reservation with the multiple, or excuse me, with the player era runs. It was super fun while it lasted. Um, but man, it just got exhausting after a while. So I would say NFL Hall of Fame rookies with multiple inscriptions. Um, I've been having a ton of fun with Pokemon cards. Um, if you've been following my channel, you know, you should know every four or five years I change my channel. You know, I think when I first started, I showed um, game used San Francisco Giants bats. Here we go 1954 Bowman. Ernie Stotner. It's a PSA 1, baby. You know it. And an autograph of a 10. Um, but I went from bats to... Hell, I don't even know. But anyways, I'm just having fun with Pokemon. I don't know anything about the damn game. I couldn't play the game if my life depended on it. Um, I'm not trying to sound like a child or a, a, a little girl here or anything. But the little guys on those freaking cards are cute as hell. Um, I really enjoyed collecting with my nine-year-old. Um, and, and the cards have some monetary value also, you know what I mean? So that's what I like to, to do. You know, I like to collect things that hopefully I can buy for five bucks and move it down the road, you know, depending on how long that road is for 15 bucks, you know? So, and I could still do that with Pokemon. And I think it's another field um, that I didn't know anything about. And I think as a collector, especially as a guy that's selling stuff, the more areas you know, just the better you are. Well-rounded seller. This is a 1958 Topps Dick Stanfield PSA 1.5 dog. You already know. With the nice rounded corners. <laughs> and I think it's funny. It says it's a PSA 10 on the autograph. Um, and it's in blue ballpoint pen. Oh, excuse me. It's super late here. In 1975 tops, Mel Blount, PSA 4, PSA autograph 10. And so you could tell by looking at these cards, this is just cards that nobody would grade, dude. Like, no one is going to grade this 1958 tops. Fran Tarkenton with the corners looking like boo-boo, like they are, man. You know what I mean? It's just not worth it. You know, let's say the autograph wasn't there. You would never get your money back on this card in this condition. And a three, there's no way. So, it's one of those mistakes I'm going to have to deal with. It's a gorgeous. At least some of these autographs are beautiful. 1972 tops, Joe Green. It's kind of tough to see with that black jersey and the blue Sharpie, but has the Hall of Fame inscription, PSA 10 on that auto. Gorgeous card. Jim Taylor. Um, he passed away, shoot, probably 10 years ago by now, but man, this dude... 
let me tell you, when I got into collecting NFL Hall of Famers, I didn't know much. Well, really didn't know shit about Jim Taylor. Um, and at the time, I was just sending to anyone and everyone that was in the NFL Hall of Fame. And that's how I got this one. And I'll show you another one towards the end of this stack that I got around the same time. But super cool, man. Really happy I was able to get this TTM when I did. Charlie Trippy, 1948 Bowman, PSA 1.5. You know it, because it was so it was so good. They couldn't just give it a one. Maybe they had to split that grade. <laughs> so bad, dude. Oh man, it's so bad. Chuck Bernardrick. Oh, I can never pronounce this dude's name ever. Um, 1951 Bowman, PSA 4, PSA DNA 10 on the auto. Love these like mini cards like this, man. I've been thinking about doing a set for many, many years, and I don't know. I just think it might be one of these sets that have the miniature cards. Nice 1956 tops. Lenny Moore, that 1.5 autograph of a 9, which is pretty bad. Because, um, man, in person, this thing looks gorgeous. Mike McCormick, 1955 Bowman, PSA 1.5, autograph of a 7. And it got the 7 because I don't know if you can see down here where my thumb is. Um, on the K, it's it's smeared a little bit. But other than that, pretty dang bold signature. Nineteen sixty-eight tops, Andy Russell. At one time, man, let me tell you, man, at one time this dude was signing his TTMs or his fan mail like crazy. And I have heard through the grapevine that here in the past six seven months or so that he's gotten sick and, and he just doesn't have the health to go through all that fan mail um and i'll be honest with you it's a shame this guy isn't in the hall of fame he used to send like full sheets like full letters and it would have all of his accolades man and the dude was able to fill up a whole paper with all the accolades that he had during his career. And it's just a damn shame he's not in the Hall of Fame. I think it's just a matter of time. Hopefully they let this man in before he passes. But very, very hard-nosed freaking linebacker back in the day. Raymond Berry. This is the Raymond Berry, PSA 2, autograph of a 10. This is the Raymond Berry that I sent about 6 to 12 months after he stopped TTMing. And I just, I don't know, man. I just felt like I could roll the dice and see what happened. At the time, I bought the card for 100 bucks, And I'd be damned if I didn't end up getting this card back signed with a letter from his daughter um, saying that, you know, Mr. Barry loved the letter and blah, 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 and that he doesn't sign much fan mail because of his health. And like, this was, you know, a good six, seven years ago. So, super awesome. I love the story behind how I was able to get it. Um, I don't know, man, just a gut feeling on to send, to send this to this gentleman. So, this one will be staying in the pace A. So now we're down to two two left, and I think both of these are just so, so cool. Um, next is a 1958 Tops Jim Taylor rookie card. And yes, it's signed on the back. It's a PSA 3, PSA uh, auto of a 9. Um, and that's because he goes off the card right here. But the gentleman... On the front of this card is not Jim Taylor of the Packers. So he would not sign the front of his rookie card. So he signs the back. 
believe it or not, I don't want to say these are rare, like you can't find them. You can find them, but they are very tough to find, man, and, and hold a pretty good premium, um, this card does. So I do want to ask you, if this was your card, how would you want it slabbed? Because it, it kind of drives me nuts that the image is on the back of the slab. But, I mean, the autograph is on the front. So, I think I like this a little bit. But, God, dude, it's such a sh shitty scenario when, when the uh, athlete does this, signs the back of a card. So, and then the last one, last but not least, I'm wanting to say I got this TTM. Um, actually, I'm really sure I got this TTM a long while back. And that is the 1966 Philadelphia Gil, Gale Sayers rookie. Um, has some beautiful creases here that go all the way through the card. Um, if this was a brisket and the marbling going through it, it would be amazing. But it's a card and you don't want creases going through it. <laughs> but it's got the PSA 1 autograph of a 9. I just don't think beggars can be choosers, man, when it comes to a signed Gale Sayers rookie. So super happy to have that. Um, not exactly over the moon excited with this submission. Um, it's kind of one of those things that I was never going to be happy with it. Um, just because it was just turning my blue flips into red flips. But nonetheless, man... <laughs> Kind of a little bit of a disappointment that this is how it turned out with all these horrific grades. Um, so, till next time, adios, be safe, bye-bye. Oh, boop, boop, there it is, toodles.